Okay. Well, time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Today's show is brought to you by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, makers of the Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. We are in our third year of five funded seasons here at the Mental Health Technology Transfer Center. One of our co-directors is also the co-director of an additional show known as the Mountain Plains Addiction Technology Transfer Center. Now let's get started. The premise of the show, as you all know, is that our guests, Shonda and Pear, can ask our mystery guest any yes or no question to try and guess their line. If they get five no's without figuring out their line of work, the mystery guest wins. Let's get started. And our mystery guest today is Thomasine. Shonda, let's start with you. Great, thank you, David. All right, Thomasine, is your job focused on providing free training and technical assistance? Yes. Does your job involve more than one state? Yes. Do you serve a large geographic area? Yes. Is it Texas? No. Mm. A large geographic area. Do you serve more than three states? Yes. Do you serve more than four states? Yes. Is it cold there? Very cold. Can the wind chill be as cold as 50 below? Yes. Do you serve the Department of Health and Human Resources Region 8? Yes. Do you only serve people licensed in mental health? No. No is correct. The training and technical assistance might serve licensed providers, but really it can reach anyone who serves persons who may at some point experience a behavioral health concern. In fact, the MHTTC specifically indicates that their target audience includes general communities, increasing knowledge and mental health literacy tribal entities, health systems and emerging leaders, behavioral health treatment providers, primary care providers and first responders, school principals and agency administrators, educators, criminal justice, farmers, clergy and peers. Okay, Shonda, back to you. So serving region eight, do you have a primary focus on rural health? Yes, in fact, my line has six products on rural mental health, a rural mental health resource page and over a dozen archived trainings that address rural mental health. Huh, does your work also include working on farm stress and mental health? It does, yes. So working in Region 8, do you also make sure to include tribal populations in your work? Yes. So let's see, you provide free training and technical assistance to people who serve persons who may experience a behavioral health concern and you have a focus on rural mental health. Let's try and learn more about the areas of expertise. With a focus on rural, do you have expertise on addressing co-occurring disorders like mental health and substance misuse? Yes. And what about rural mental health care access and availability as well as farm stress and mental health for migrant farm workers? Yes. Suicide prevention, crisis de-escalation and trauma-informed care? Yes, and we even work to provide a rapid response and assistance in a tribal community addressing a suicide cluster. Wow, impressive. So is your expertise and focus on tribal mental health then? No, there is a population specific mental health technology transfer center that focuses on addressing the mental health needs of individuals who are indigenous. We meet needs that are present in region eight and make sure to partner our work with other technology transfer centers. Pear, that's three no's, we're on to you now. Let's keep going with areas of expertise. What about kids? Do you have expertise in addressing K through 12 school-based mental health services? Yes. What about addressing the needs of college-aged youth? Yes. And have you adapted any of these trainings to address the mental health needs of students in response to the global health pandemic? Yes. Absolutely. We began addressing training topics and areas after the uh, isolation of the pandemic in the spring of 2020. In particular, we've focused some efforts on telehealth and expanding telehealth skills. That is correct. In fact, this program hosted an event on March 12th before the national shutdown even fully began that specifically addressed the psychosocial impacts of disasters, assisting community leaders. 
The event and product page for this free one hour training had roughly 750 views in a region with a very small population. You seem to be onto something, Pear. Let's keep going. Great, thank you, David. Now I want to learn more about how you plan these services. Do you conduct, conduct a training needs assessment? Absolutely, yes. A survey with over 800 respondents identifying training and technical assistance needs and preferred modalities was conducted. We even assess training needs specific to the needs of probation and parole population in Region A. All of these results are in products and you will find them on our webpage. Critical Great. we found is serving the needs of people with co-occurring disorders and trauma. Do you get feedback from an advisory board? We do, yes. Do you take requests from regional behavioral health authorities? Yes, you will, you will see on this page our regional administrator, Charlie Smith, is part of our effort. What about focus groups, key informant interviews, and listening sessions with groups like educators? Yes, yes, and yes. Do you determine needs based on what other regions are doing? No, not at all. There is, they're always in response to what our region is requesting. Well, that is four no's. Shonda, it's up to you to bring this home and guess Thomasine's line or Thomasine wins. Okay. I think in order to guess your line, I need to know more about the types of services. So we've covered training and technical assistance, but more specifically, do you employ communities of practice? Yes. A webinar series that are open to public? Yes. Small group trainings and intensive TA and intensive community specific trainings? Yes. What about conference exhibits, presentations, and online public events? Yes, to all of the above. Have you developed websites on specific topics that serve as an online library of information? For example, your rural or school-focused areas. Do you have pages dedicated to evidence-based practices and other resources that are freely available? Yes, we have a resource page on rural mental health, farm stress, school mental health, COVID-19 and mental health, and criminal justice and mental health and telehealth information, among other resources. And what about products? Do you develop toolkits and case studies? Yes. Yes, in fact, one thing we are really proud of in our region is the toolkit model we've implemented for many topics. The model provides a mental health topic of concern using a case presentation and addresses barriers to mental health care with some suggestions on how to adapt that care using evidence-based principles and practical tips. Yes, there is a toolkit on addressing co-occurring disorders among farming communities, a toolkit addressing the mental health needs of a rural student, which provides resources for public schools, and a toolkit on building resiliency among youth who are indigenous in our K-12 school setting. And soon, they will use the same model to walk through resources and tools for addressing provider well-being during and following the pandemic. Shonda, you're so close now, let's keep going. Great, thanks David. You've already mentioned being proud of creating toolkits with case studies, proud of how quickly you adapted trainings and products to address mental health virtually and in response to the pandemic, and how you've worked collaboratively with several other MHTTCs and ATTCs to provide training. So let's stick with collaboration. Did you work with more than 10 external organizations in year two? Yes. More than 20? Yes. 30? Yes. 30 organizations, and that includes traumatic brain injury networks, the National Association of Rural Mental Health, our sister project, the SMAI Advisor, the American Psychological Association, the National Organization of State Offices of Rural Health, and the United States Department of Agriculture, to name a few. Okay, Shonda, we are close to out of time. Can you guess Thomas Ian's line? I think that I can. Are you the director of the Mountain Plains Mental Health Technology Transfer Center? Actually, I'm a co-director located in Grand Forks, North Dakota at the University of North Dakota. Dennis Mohat, located in Boulder, Colorado with the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education is our other co-director. Can you tell us a few fun facts about your MHTTC? Sure, I'm tickled pink that we are a multidisciplinary effort. We have staff that work 
have talents in occupational therapy and are licensed, psychology, psychiatry, education, social work, population health, public health, and nursing. Also, as I mentioned, we are a geographically large area with small service populations. Region one, two, and three could fit in our region eight geographically. Well, thank you, Thomasine. And before we go, let's quickly hear from today's panelists. Per, can you tell us a little bit more about what you and Shonda do? Of course. My job focuses on promoting all the work of the Mountain Plains MHTTC. We work on social media, have live tweets of our webinars, and have recently created the newsletter. This year, we're really looking forward to reaching people in new ways. We will have a new blog series representing all six states in our region addressing provider well-being. We already have two curriculums on Healthy Knowledge, which is an online learning platform that offers CEUs. And we are looking forward to working with tribal colleges in this coming year to expand curriculum on educational and behavioral health content. That's great. Shonda, anything to add? Yes, my role is really related to doing assessment and research, and I serve as chair on the Workforce Committee. If anyone is interested in learning more about the MHTTC, you should follow us on Twitter or Facebook, and you should subscribe to our email listserv. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Stay tuned to learn more about the other exciting products available from SAMHSA, the makers of the Mountain Plains Mental Health Technology Transfer Center.